start off sailing thinking that yeah, sailing will be what I do for the rest of my life. I always enjoyed the competition and the, uh, the, the regattas and the competition. It was just really good fun. And what I'd do if I wasn't sailing, I don't know, but uh, I definitely don't think there was a career for me in golf, just uh, <laughs> judging on the way I played. Thirty-three-year-old Dean Barker is the number one helmsman for Team New Zealand's 2007 America's Cup campaign. His aim, like every Kiwi's dream, is to bring the cup back to New Zealand. Quite the child prodigy, Dean Barker joined Team New Zealand when 24 years old. As then cup holders, the Kiwis had to defend their title in the Haraki Gulf in 2000. That was uh, obviously a huge um, thrill to be part of the, the 2000 America's Cup team. The depth of talent was just so strong you know, there was no, there were just no teams that could really catch up the gap that was uh, was there. So, you know, being part of that was, um, you know, it's just something I'll never forget. This was the ultimate dream for the young helmsman, who found himself alongside one of the great names in sailing, Russell Coots. As the Kiwis led 4-0 against the Italian team Prada, Russell Coots let Dean take the helm for the last regatta. In the back of my mind, it was sort of I was half expecting it to come up and. When Russell basically he pulled me aside in the morning and you know said did I want to do the do the race uh, that day, yeah, you know, it was an incredible day really. It was um, you know the first thing I did, I, you know just leapt at the opportunity because you just don't get that many opportunities in life and they were just uh, so excited and. Dean took up the challenge brilliantly, and at 26 years old he held the most prestigious sailing cup in the world aloft for the first time. In 2003, a dramatic turn of events occurred. Russell Coots, the uncontested leader in match racing, left Team New Zealand for the Swiss Syndicate Alinghi. Moreover, Russell Coots didn't leave alone. The best crew members followed him. Dean Barker found himself orphaned, alone at the head of a team to be built up from scratch. My initial reaction, I just couldn't believe it. It was, it just was like a fairy tale that had ended. We, we had a, had probably the most dominant sailing team ever. It was so, the potential and the ability and the talent that was there was just so strong. It was such a, you know, a close knit group of people uh, that I think it would have taken a very special team to have uh, been able to come, come in and, uh, and, and win. In February 2003, the America's Cup started off in the Haraki Gulf. Top dog Russell Coots soon got the upper hand and left his former pupil with no chance. I'm crossing it, I'm crossing it. Team New Zealand were hoping, in vain, to get their first victory. But fate was against the Kiwis. Water on board, a broken boom, they were spared nothing. Even the mast was lost. It was such a disaster in the end. But at the same time, uh, you know, they were fighting and starting off a battle with huge disadvantages. You know, they'd been, the team had been decimated. Um, I don't think any of us realised to, to what extent it had been decimated until we saw the cracks that appeared towards the end, cracks that would probably have not appeared had they not lost all those key personnel from Coots and his dream team downwards. OK, watch your fingers and things, you guys. OK. I think people kind of maybe clung on to the hope that, uh, and the hype that, oh, you know, the good young'uns can do it, they can come back, and that there's enough history in it to make it work. We were all proved wrong. Be careful here, guys. Look after yourself. Oh. OK. It was just the most frustrating time in my life in, in February, March 2003, because we put so much effort in, uh, and we felt like we were so much better than what we, what the result actually showed. That's a boat pack, OK, guys? Yeah. 
I think that any so-called bad press that uh, Dean might have got would have been ameliorated by the fact that people really felt that the boat had let him down as much as anything else. Uh, I mean, he won enormous respect for the way he did take on all that responsibility, you know, especially for somebody you know, who'd been thrust into that much limelight, into that much pressure at such a young age, and then to have the responsibility of driving the boat and everything else. I mean, that was a huge pressure. Bad wave in three. One of the major criticisms was there wasn't a strong leader in the team. There was sort of, um, there were many people, very flat management structure. Uh, there was no real strong leadership that was, uh, that was being shown. The only way that we could see to rectify that was to actually to get a central figure to come in. And when you start looking around the New Zealand yachting circles, because we wanted to keep that, that identity very much a New Zealand person, and you know, the obvious candidate was uh, Grant, because he, he had so much involvement in running his own campaigns. He had been successful in, in round the world races. Grant Dalton, a mighty figurehead in Kiwi sailing, was chosen to build a new team spirit, leaving Dean Barker free to helm for the 2007 America's Cup Challenge. Dalton leads the team and, uh, and, and takes a lot of that responsibility away from Dean, and that allows Dean to concentrate on, on the sailing and the skippering of the boat, and he can just be fully focused on that. He's rolling into a jive, we're just going to ping the uh, pin in and then um, do a couple of tacks. I think that's a nice combination. You've got one very considered, thoughtful, highly intelligent, gifted yachtsman, and on the other hand, you've got a brush, uh, a professional yachty, done a lot, not, not frightened to speak his mind, but you put that together as a, a combination, and it could be a lethal combination looking out to 2007. The Dalton-Barker combination works. All of the 2005 and 2006 Louis Vuitton acts were highly competitive. Team New Zealand have definitely established themselves as one of the syndicates most likely to carry off the Louis Vuitton Cup in 2007. And the Barker-Dalton pairing has also set up a new style of team management. I met with Dean before I took the job and I saw in Dean something then that, that people had told me about and, and that I, he's quite a deep thinker. He's very intelligent. Uh, and the strength is a guy that is fast, can think about making a boat go quickly. That's a great starter. Okay, here we go, just doing a sharp turn up. Hines flow mode, Hines flow. He can do some really brilliant things sometimes. I believe he's really got the knack of getting well windward when he's chosen the right-hand side of the course. He's one of the best, perhaps. Probably one of the best in the world. Building on the wind, OK? Building on the wind. They did a psychology test last time. Uh, and one of the things that they found was he was able to absorb lots and lots of information at the same time and make quick decisions, which is the quality for a good starter. What he sees is probably a little bit different to what you and I see in terms of his reaction time. Yes, he has certainly got a, you know, a good set of eyes on him. And the New Zealand boat squeezes round the mark. Genoa still sheeted on hard. Can Oracle roll over the top of the New Zealand boat? They're going faster. The New Zealand boat now in the lured position. During the regattas in Valencia last June, the Kiwis gained even more strength, winning 11 out of 11 match races. But underneath, he's got an absolute desire to try and win the America's Cup. And maybe when we look back at history, the events of 2003 could well be the catalyst for Dean to go on to great things. I think that there's no better way of you know, paying the, the public back, you know, and, and ourselves as well, uh, to, to go to Valencia in 2007 and win the Cup back.